Our 2013 CES coverage is powered by Ford. Go further. For Hack 5, I'm Darren Kitchen here at CES 2013 checking out Oculus. And I'm about to go into the into the Oculus Rift, as it were. So are you ready? Yeah, I'm ready. I'm. Right. I'm a, I got to be honest. I'm a big Unreal fan, so All bring right. it on. This should be good. All right, so we're just gonna put this. All right, my eyes are closed. Take it with your left hand. Okay. Yeah, just help me. Yep. Just get it in the right sweet spot there. Uh, th that you adjust it a little bit. Look pretty clear. Yeah, that looks great. Okay. Okay. All right. So look. Uh, look left. Look right. Look up. Look down, and actually look backward. Look at me. Turn your body and look at me. There you go. Where are you? I'm gone. I don't see you. <laughs> where, where did you go? So I'm gonna give you a controller just so you can walk around a little bit. Just Wonderful. Left hand. Okay. Left hand's better. And uh, you just want this stick, and you're gonna use your head to sort of look around. Okay. Oh wow. Yeah, strafing, strafing is a little weird. This is just, you know, like I mentioned, prototype hardware with prototype software, but it's a tech demo using Unreal Engine 3 and uh, the Oculus Rift developer kits. And I don't know, what do you think? What's your initial Well, impression? Well, okay, so I'll be honest. I've played with some uh, stereoscopic 3D glasses from, like, Vuzix and stuff like that before, but I've never, uh, never done a head tracking system that's this. I mean, this is a really unique head tracking system. What, what's the secret about this? So we actually developed our own um, Oculus head tracker. And so we've done a lot to optimize that for VR. It, the, the head tracker runs at a rate of up to 1,000 hertz, which is really, really fast. We're also doing a lot of Nensor, uh, novel sensor fusion, head modeling, predictive tracking, all sorts of tricks and software to make uh, the, the head tracking latency as low as possible for the best VR experience. And so, what are some of the challenges in coming up with this? Is it the refresh rate? Is it the resolution? Is it the sensors and the calibration? Just about, um, just about everything is. <laughs> Sorry, I really no, you're you. fine. You're fine. You're like, I'm looking right at you, but I, I know. don't see you. Just about everything is a challenge. You know, we uh, we invest a lot in our tracker technology. We're constantly evaluating new display hardware to lower latency there. Um, the software is a challenge, you know, using all the latest techniques for, you know, sensor fusion and, and predictive modeling. These are all challenges, but we're trying to make it as easy as possible for the average gamer to experience really, truly immersive VR and finally step inside the game for the first time. I mean, no joke, this has been the, the, the dream uh, for quite a while now. Uh, where did you guys come from and how did you get into this space? So, um, my name's Nate Mitchell. I'm VP of product at Oculus. The company was actually founded by Palmer Lucky, who's wandering around the show somewhere. Um, he actually designed and invented the Rift in his parents' garage over the course of two and a half years. You know, he was always super passionate about head-mounted displays and virtual reality. And he wanted something that actually allowed him to, you know, jack into the matrix for video games, really step inside the game. And there was nothing available, so he uh, experimented and ended up building uh, the Rift that you're playing with now. And so are these kind of like the same kind of accelerometers and, and sensors that I would find inside of like a Nintendo Wii controller? Or, or what did the early prototypes look like? Well, so I can't speak for the Nintendo Wii necessarily, but it is the same sort of um, combination and sensor hardware that you'd find in your phone. This is so cool. So what's your uh, goals here? Uh, do you have like a target market and what you're trying to do with the product? You know, we're right now we're completely focused on developers. Uh, what you're using now is an early prototype of our developer kit. Um, so we're hoping that developers come out and, and buy these uh, developer kits, develop content for the Rift. And as we approach the consumer version launch, there should be, fingers crossed, content for uh, gamers out there all over the world to step inside and experience like they've never experienced anything before. You have to tell me, in your beta tests of this, have you taken it into, like, Counter-Strike? Have you seen people have, like, visceral reactions to playing games this way? I, uh, I can't speak to any official games, but I have seen uh, plenty of screaming and uh, jumping out of chairs. It's very immersive experience, and that's definitely what we're going for. Okay, I've only been at CES for a few hours, and I've already found the product that I want to take home with me. Um, wow, this feels so cool. I, I guess I, all I should say is check out the technology uh, from Oculus. Where's your website? www.oculusvr.com and the product is the Oculus Rift. Yeah, the resolution here is a lot better, but the world there was really cool. For continued coverage of all things CES, head to revision3.com. I seriously want to go back in the game now. Thank yeah. you so much. That was awesome. Yeah, thank you. 
Sync is about helping keep you connected while on the go. One of the most useful features of Sync is its ability to control what you listen to. And Sync App Link gives you the power to control apps like Pandora and Slacker Radio with your voice. But sometimes you're going to listen to your own tunes. Well, Sync makes it so easy. It gives you hands-free control of your music files from your digital music player, USB drive, or other compatible devices. And even better, if you ask it to play similar music, Sync even uses your own tunes to make a playlist. Thanks again to Ford for powering this Hack 5 CES special.